fifth forums for the 2021 general elections in the Cayman Islands, being hosted by the Cayman Islands Chamber of Commerce in association with Fosters. My name is Will Pinot. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Chamber. I'll serve as panelist and moderator for this evening's forum, and I'd like to thank or I'd like to welcome Cayman Brack West candidate Maxine McCoy Moore and thank her for accepting the Chamber's invitation to participate in this forum. Fellow candidate Moses Kekernel declined our invitation due to another conflicting commitment. Mrs. McCoy Moore, your willingness to appear on this forum this evening demonstrates to voters that you take the democratic process seriously and are ready to respond to a series of questions on the top issues as identified by a recent online chamber survey. More than 400 responses and more than 200 questions have been submitted via the survey, and these will help to frame the questions for this evening's forum. When the chamber was established in 1965, the goal was to create an organization that supports, promotes, and protects the interests and welfare of its members and the wider community. Being nonpartisan, we have hosted forums every election since the 1988 election. For nine elections, we have provided members of the community with an opportunity to hear from their candidates and educate themselves before election day. These forums have taken weeks of planning and preparation and would not be possible without the financial support of Foster's Affinity Recruitment, Baden's Legal and Corporate, and DART. So a big thank you to each one of them. I'd also like to extend a wholehearted thanks to our media partners, Cayman Mall Road, Cayman Life TV, Radio Cayman, Government Information Services, and ICCI-FM ICCI for agreeing to broadcast tonight's forum. It is the first time that we have um, had live streamed the forums on the internet, and we hope that this new format will enable more people to watch them from the comfort of their home. It is now time to begin this evening's forum, and I'll explain the rules and then introduce Mrs. Mac Mac uh, McCoy Moore. So, Ms. Moore, we're going to, I'll go over the rules with, the, with you on the forum. So you'll be asked a series of questions. You'll have two minutes to answer if you choose to do so. And at the conclusion of the forum, you'll be allowed two and a half minutes to deliver a closing statement. And now I'm going to give a brief introduction for Mrs. Max, Maxine McCoy Moore. She was born in St. Andrews, Jamaica. She is the first child and only daughter of six-generation Caymanian parents. She has five younger brothers, one daughter and two sons, five grandsons, and one granddaughter. Mrs. Moore was educated at the Spot Bay Primary School, Cayman Brack High School, and ICCI in Newlands, where she completed two years of computer science and operations. This enabled her to become the first Cayman Bracker to sit behind a computer in the 1980s. Ms. McCoy Moore was the instigator for the first prom and graduation for the students of the Brack High School and has many years' experiences working with government and the private sector in finance, administration, bookkeeping, accounting, customer representation, postal, teaching, HR management, banking, insurance broker and agent, and office manager. She also volunteered her time to help with the setting up of the Cayman Islands Civil Service Association's co-op credit union office in the BRAC and the Cayman Islands Boy Scouts, along with fundraising events for the Lions Club. She's chaired the Pirates Week Committee for Little Cayman and also uh, the Agricultural so Society in Little Cayman, as well as various committees for the Lions Club. All of these jobs have helped Ms. Maxine Moore, Ms. Maxine McCoy Moore, not only meet though most of her neighbors at such a personal level, but also realize how important it is to get involved to make her presence known and felt in the Little Cayman and Cayman Brack community. So I'd like to welcome you, Ms. Maxine. Nice, nice to see you. And nice to see time, you again, Will. We're going to take a short commercial break, and when we return, we're going to begin the questioning for this evening. So please stay tuned. Behind everything you do is a promise.
and Little Cayman candidates forum for the Chamber of Commerce. I'm going to begin questioning this evening. So the first question for Mrs. Um, McCoy Moore. What makes you the ideal candidate to represent the constituency of Cayman Brack West and Little Cayman? Hi, Will. It's nice to see you again. Um, I'd like to say I have a PhD, and my PhD goes like this. Paper for perseverance for all generations. H for health and education prioritization. D for dedication and determination to get it all done. I'm a people's person. Everybody in Cayman Brack and Lil Cayman, and in fact, in the whole Cayman Islands, just about know who Maxine McCoy Moore is. Those in Grand probably know me by Maxine Thompson, the queen of country of the Cayman Islands, because I love singing. And um, I do feel that I'm the ideal candidate because I have persevered over the years. And the reason why I cannot give up is because I do not see anything positive as yet done for the children of the Cayman Islands as a whole. I don't see anything put in place for the elderly that is, uh, is make sure that it is done. Okay, they got a lot of NAU, and they got a lot of, um, you know, rest homes, the Pines, the Kukernal, um Community Center. But we experience every year hurricanes. And we found out last year that maybe earthquakes too. But um, the one thing that I've noticed is that um, the shelters on the Bluff, Kim and Brack, the Ashton Ruddy and the Siemens, they're filled with all the old folks because Kim and Brack has a lot of old folks. And then there's no space for nobody else. Um, I do feel that I would represent not only just Kim and Brack West and Lil Cayman, but the whole entire Kim and Brack and Lil Cayman in a way that no other MLA, or should I say MP, member of parliament, that they have now been renamed, um, has ever done. And that is because I have been here. I feel it. I've been through everything, including the high cost of living. The way that, you okay. know, that they tend to forget, the government tends to forget that there are three islands to take care of, not just one or two. Thank you and very much, Ms. Ms. Moore. That's the time up for the first question. So we'll move on to the second question. What two or three national issues would you seek to address if you're elected? And definitely the first one I would address would be the health care situation. We must see a little bit further than our nose. And that is Kim and Bragg Bluff is God's gift to the Cayman Islands when it comes to natural disasters like hurricanes and earthquakes, and um, even overflowing of the sea, you know. Um, we need to put in place a proper healthcare system, not only just for Grand Cayman, but for the sister islands too. Education is also a key note for me. It needs to be upgraded. And not only, that's the reason why nobody as Caymanian really can stay in Lil Cayman, because after six years, we have a primary school. After six years, we got to move again. And, you know, the infrastructure, the, the proper zoning of the bluff, because you can't do it on the mainland in Cayman Brack, but you can do it of the bluff, and you can do it now for Lil Cayman before it gets too late, where you can have farming, where you have commercial, where you have residential. So those three are the top priorities for me. Health, education, infrastructure, environment, and making sure that the people are taken care of, not just a chosen few, but all, you know? So the national issues that I see that, you know, face us right now is COVID-19, as you know. Not only COVID-19, 19, 19 20, 21, who only the good Lord knows how much further. So that we would have to, and I have envisioned that this is not gonna be the only pandemic that we're gonna have to deal with. So we need to set in healthcare system for the sister islands, just in case that something more or worse happens in the future, God forbid. But at the same time, I do see that it is a necessity to set in place the hospitals on the bluff in case of a major hurricane or earthquake, God forbid, again, happens because 
It is possible. Thank you. The next question we're going to deal with is um, what you consider to be uh, the top priority to address for the constituency of Cayman Brack West and Little Cayman. What do you think are the, the top constituency issues? The high cost of living for the sister islands, because it is very high in grand. You double it for Cayman Brack and you triple it for Little Cayman. Now, there are some people who would, do, would beg to differ with me. They would say, oh, well, the rent in Cayman Brack is cheaper. I will agree with that. But then everything else is so much more expensive, including the food, the electricity, the water. Not even proper water is for Lil Cayman. We don't have a water authority and we need one because Lil Cayman from 1977 when they done the study, they found out, say, that uh, we hardly get any rain. And, um, you know, I do feel that the constituents, the, the young folks, their biggest concern right now is the decriminalization of the hemp plants. And I do think that um, it is time that we stop talking about it and educate our children to be scientists, to understand the pros and cons of all medicinal plants, like the noni, like the periwinkle, not only just the hemp plants, but to, to continue to send our young people to jail and then when they come out, they're criminals, they can't get no job, then the government has to feed them for the rest of their lives clothe them and try to educate them, to me, is uncalled for. And um, not only just the young people are talking about it, but the mothers are crying to me that um, my child has got to be here home with me all the time because they can't get a job. And then also the health care needs to be upgraded, and so does the education system, you know. Um, we're not falling behind that bad, but that we can't catch up. And we can catch up with everything. The infrastructure, as I said before, also needs to be addressed. Proper zoning, proper everything that needs to be in place for the sister islands before it gets too late and be a second Georgetown that you can't even find any place to park. So the constituents have been speaking to me about a whole lot of topics, but those are the main ones that they were really concerned about. Thank you. Next, next one is about a project that... Um created a little bit of controversy in, in Cayman Brac. So the Cayman Brac and Little Cayman Development uh, Control Board recently approved plans to construct a 15,000 square foot helicopter hangar, a 25,000 square foot aircraft parking area, an office building, a concrete apron, and a taxiway close to the Charles Kernel International Airport to station two Black Hawk helicopters on site. So what are, what are your views on that project? I do feel that our whole planning department needs a complete revamp. You know, with people that are not biased and have a conflict of interest. Um, whereas when I read up on what they're going to do, I don't think it's such a bad idea per se, but I think it's in the wrong location. And it will disturb everybody's way of life. You know, with helicopters taking off all hours of the night, all hours of the morning, noon, and night. And to forget about our past cultural heritage and just fill it in with no, no consideration whatsoever, I think was very inconsiderate. That should have been put towards the, all the people to decide before the piece of land sold and, and you know, what they're doing there, everybody disagreed about. Um, just like everybody disagreed about the new marine parks up at Point of Sand. So I do know years ago when they were doing a project here in Lil Cayman, I fought against, yes, me and my family, the McCoy family here in Lil Cayman, we fought against them um, closing up an underground cave that had about 500 rock iguanas in it. But it, <laughs> um, unfortunately, when you buy a piece of land in the Cayman Islands because of the improper zoning that they have, you know, they don't listen to you when you tell them, say, no, don't cover that up because don't do this or don't do that. So it just needs to be handled in the right manner. And that helicopter hangar, I still wonder how many Cayman Brackers or Caymanian as a whole will get a job there. How many will be trained as pilots? How many will be able to get a job 
even though we don't all agree with it, it's going to come true, whether we like it or not. It's already been approved. Okay, thank you. So the, the next question we'll deal with um, deals with what are your ideas to lower the cost of living in Cayman Brac and Little Cayman? Wow, you need to lower it all in the Cayman Islands, not just here, you know, because we do pay, pay after you pay all of that import duty in Grand Cayman, we don't pay any more import duty, but we got to pay a second freight and in Little Cayman a third freight. You got to pay Port Authority charges here in Little Cayman and we don't have a Port Authority. We don't even have a proper dock. We, it's, it's um, drive on, drive off. God forbid that um, an accident do happen, but it's, it's just right there waiting to be happened. It's just a matter of when. Now, Kim and Bragg does have a proper port, but it also needs to be upgraded. And to lower the cost of living up here is very, very hard to foresee right now until the government do a study on the cost of living and where we now got any salary increases, any decent salary increases from the year of our Lord, 1999, since the 21st century roll in. Now, it was given, taken away, given, taken away, and that don't work. And yes, here late, last three, four years, a little five and a little five, and then the teachers were thought of and got some of them, but not all. But how can you lower it if the cost of import duty is so high? It went from, I think, 12.5 to 30% in the past four to eight years. Um, that's totally wrong on the people. But it can be lowered if they look at different ways and mean and get a complete study of how much they would have to increase the salaries in order for the people to even save a little $50 a month for their old age. Because the pensions are stealing their money, is how I see it. They're not really giving them their full amount, $1,000 a month, you can't survive on that. That's all they want to give you back after you work so hard all your life for your money that they're holding on for. If they, if it go up and down, then you lose. That's wrong, totally wrong, you know? And I'm not saying all pensions, I'm just saying some. Well, thank you. We've got through the first five questions. At this time, we're going to take a short commercial break. Please stay tuned. We're going, we'll take this break and then we'll come back with the next round of questions. Please stay tuned.
Back to the Chamber of Commerce Candidates Forum for Cayman Brack West and Little Cayman. We're now entering the second round of questions. And for the first question, we're going to talk a little bit about employment. So what is your view about the Department of Work and the current priority of employing Caymanians? Would you propose any changes to the current system? And if yes, what would you recommend? At present, right now, there are too many people here on work permits. That's my viewpoint, my opinion. Now, I get a lot of criticism saying, who am I to criticize when I hire foreigners? I said, yes, I do, because the Caymanians cannot come because after six years, they're gonna move again. Once you put in the infrastructure, then a lot of Caymanians will move to Lil Cayman and Cayman Brack. But in the meantime, work has to be done. Right now, I think after this COVID kind of lift a little bit better and the borders open up, that we should give our Caymanians or whoever are here, including the work permit holders that are here. Because I consider a person who lives and work here in the Cayman Islands or Caymanian, whether they got a piece of paper or not, because they're here living, they're here working. So um, work and NWDA and immigration, it all needs to be a complete revamp and a complete looking over to make sure that the Caymanians are given first priority and they are treated as the first citizen in their own country and not a second class citizen. Like I am totally shocked at the airport in Grand that you don't see one Caymanian face there. And it used to be loaded with Caymanian smiles and Cayman Brack is getting to be the same way. And not that you don't have the Caymanians there, but if they're not overqualified, they're underqualified. So it, they need to, to take a, a, a direct look and a, and a real good sit down and make sure that everything that they have mandated is regulated and give Caymanians first priority. They've been talking about it. Yes, it's in the law, but is it really being done? I don't think so. So that's what really needs to, to be done is that Caymanians be given top priority. Thank you. The next, next question is, which ministry or position in the new government would best suit your skills and why? District administration or education. District administration, because I used to work at Public Works in Kim and Brack, and I'd done all the budgeting for, from 1977 till when they moved me to Grand Cayman in 1981. The reason why they moved me, because they were so impressed of how I had done the work after Hurricane Allen, August of 6, 1980. And they wanted me down there to fix their books up so because they knew computers were coming. So I set up all of their public works books. I set up all their treasure with secretary to the chief accountant, Mr. Louis Moncrief. Um, and I set up all of GIS before it was GIS, all of the books so that they could easily take it and put it on computers. And now that uh, I am here, I know what district administration needed from the beginning. And that was when they budget for something to use all the money and don't send it back to Grand Cayman. Because the old folks used to say, make Grand Caymanians see that I, we don't need them. No, we, we need the money, even if we don't need them. You know, that they could say that when all of the rich folks lived in Kim and Brack. So I do feel that district administration, I could do an excellent job with revitalizing that. And also education, because I've been teaching for a long time. And I do know a lot of history of the Kim and Islands, of which the children needs to be fully aware of. And the education department does need upgrading, even though it is so far so good. Now that they changed from the American way of teaching and the books to back to the UK, because when I was going to school, it was the UK. And so it was a little confusing when you get computers and everything is American spelling, you know? <laughs> so I do think that I would do a better job of district administration and revitalizing it and putting smiles back on the people of Kim and Brack and Lil Cayman by budgeting the right and correct man and using all the money. Oh, thank you. Now, the next next topic is revitalization. 
um, in talking about Cayman Brack West and Little Cayman. You know, what, what are your ideas about revitalizing the economy of Cayman Brack and Little Cayman? Wow, that's a big, long job to do since Hurricane Island, August the 6th, when the seas went straight to the bluff and totally devastated the whole economy. It was really a mess. Paloma was just a drop in the bucket. But to revitalize it is a long, tedious job. And it does take not only my ideas, but it takes the ideas of all the people of what they would like to see done. You know, like um, tourist attractions, you know. As I said, I'm not only here for Kim and Brack, West and Lil' Cayman. I'm also for the entire Kim and Brack. So my grandfather, God rest his heavenly soul, he was a pastor. And he said to me in 1996, when I first started, he said, Maxi, he says, we need to put a safeguard out there so that people can um, view Lil' Kim and Brack and buy the Johnny Cake without falling off the edge of the bluff. Charge a dollar. That was 1996 for every tourist that want to view it. But three people there to work. It would be give three people jobs, you know. Um, charge them to go and view it. Go to nice parking. That is a good example. What we need to do is zoom off that bluff properly first and revitalize it with agriculture, revitalize it with um, self sustainable fruits, vegetables like Marcherito Farm, our farmer for many years. And um, Lil Cayman has a bigger problem because the iguanas eat everything and that's no, no lie. That's the God almighty truth. They do eat everything that you try to plant. But I'm still trying my, my farming, you know. Um, you have a lot of historical sites that needs to be preserved. And where they're going to put that new hangar is one of those that they should have preserved. There are a lot of them on Lil Cayman and Cayman Brack. And who knows, we might have another crystal cave here that we don't know nothing about. Up at Long Beach in Cayman Brack could be another tourist attraction. You know, there's so many places that can be revitalized to attract tourism and staycationers. Thank you. The next topic is transportation, and we'll take this for the, all of the Cayman Islands. So significant development projects are underway or have been approved around Grand Cayman. What additional changes to roads or public transport systems would you like to see above the current road improvements already announced? And also, do you support placing a limit or restriction on vehicles imported? I do. Um, when I left Grand Cayman and way back in November 1995, it was because of the traffic woes. I always got to work late because no matter how early you left, it was just not sufficient roads. But then they put more roads, but then they allowed more vehicles in. So we should restrict the amount of vehicles that are allowed to be brought in, you know. Um, I would like to, to build new roads in the sister islands. For example, not new roads, but upgrade the roads, including a plan to wider and higher roads for the use of vehicles on a carriageway and the side for jog joggers pedestrians and bicycles. This is what something it is necessarily needed in the sister islands. This will be accompanied with new signs, buffers and road safety measures uh, to keep our citizens and visitors safe while they travel. Now in Grand Cayman, uh, it, there is a lot of um, different vehicles and pedestrians, crossings and everything. We don't have sufficient in the sister islands and we do need them. Um, you know, to upgrade also need would mean widening of roads. On the bluff, Kim and Brack, it doesn't have, it, if you get a flat tire on the bluff, you easily run off and get, get an accident. God knows how bad the accident could be because it doesn't have any, any, any way for you to pull off on top of the bluff, except one or two places is not in every place. And, you know, you need to, Put in place the proper widening of the road so that if you get a flat tire, you can easily stop and don't run off the road immediately to get in a, in a massive accident. So there are a lot of ways, but again, it needs to be revamped and relooked after. Okay, thank you. So we'll deal with a, a subject that you you're passionate about. I believe it's education. Uh, 
Chamber of Commerce members have identified finding and retaining local talent as one of the greatest challenges facing the business community. Many high school graduates entering the workforce lack basic literacy and numeracy skills. Apart from specialized in vocational and technical training, how do you plan to ensure that all of Cayman's graduates are prepared to enter the workforce and progress in their chosen careers? I would like to see them introduced into the schools. Um, a, a standard of education where it teaches the children how to budget, teach them how to even open a bank account, teach them not only how to read and write, or your ABCs and one, two, threes, but how to actually survive after they graduate from high school. Because most of them are not showed that. And if they don't, if they don't have good parents, for example, good parenting that knows about it, then they're stuck. So I would like to see that educational wise, all of the children are not just um, upgraded to the next class unless they actually pass certain exams. And if they don't pass them, they got to stay in the same class they were in. When I was going to school, that's how it was. If you were not smart enough to move on, because not every child is at the same level. Everybody is different. Somehow special needs, somehow autistic problems. We should have different schools for all these different kinds of children, because not everybody is at the same level. So in order to help them, we need to introduce a new system. And the system would be, that not everybody is treated at the same level. So train more teachers, train the, the ones that are artistic, they'll be taught about, taught in the right manner how to um, operate. The ones that are special needs the same way. Now, those that are normal, they need to be showed, including all of the special needs and autistic children, they need to be showed also how to budget and how to take care of themselves after high school. You know, um, it, we need to expand our educational system. We need to upgrade it. And it is a good system. It just needs to be regulated and man, man, mandated in the right way. Well, thank you very much. We've gone through 10 questions now. We're going to take another short break. And when we return, we'll begin the next round of questioning. Please stay tuned.
Best Candidates Forum for Cayman Brac West and Little Cayman. Gone through the first 10 questions. Now we begin the next round of questions. And the next one deals with the stay over tourism reopening. So what is your position on reopening the borders to stay over visitors? Definitely, Will, we got to do something. Some Because we cannot um, continue to sustain paying a stipend of $1,500 a month to the, to the workers who don't have any work that are here stuck in the tourism sector. But depending on the other countries vaccinating their population and the effectiveness of the branded vaccine, which would be approved by the Center of Disease Control and WHO, which is World Health Organization. The answer also depends on the virus mutation. And if vaccinated person will be immune, then to the criminals can open his border once again to airline travel and to cruise ship travel. We have seen other islands desperate to reopen and it's been a repeated disaster. So I wouldn't rush to really reopen. We, if we did open once 80% of our population here is vaccinated on all three islands, um, we would allow, uh, but we also got to think about the children that are not vaccinated that might be coming in. So we have to put in, in place a stipulation that the children and parents would have to be still be um, quarantined for that 10 to 14 days, but then we should allow um, once you get the machine that can prove within an hour or two that they are COVID free and everything is okay. Once they're vaccinated and got the proof of it from what we recognize, then, you know, it, it can work. It, it is doable. It is doable to open, um, I'd say by 1st of June. Um, but at the same time, it's a long way to go before we can actually say that all of them because they all have nothing to vaccinate children against it. Um, so it, it, it's a long journey ahead of us. And as I said, I don't think that this is gonna be the only pandemic that we're gonna have to face. So we have to reopen and soon. Well, thank you. Next question deals with the balance between development and environment. So do you believe that we can actually strike a balance between development and the environment? And if yes, uh, how would you attempt to achieve this balance if elected? I do think we can strike a balance between them because, <coughs> sorry, because the environment, we got to protect the flora and fauna. I've said so from 1996, not only on the land, but in the sea and in the air. Because um, if we don't protect them, then what are we going to have to attract any tourism here? We have to protect them. And we have already done a lot of studies on everything. And we just have not really implemented them in the right manner. So once we go back to the, the drawing board, as you would say, and we pick back up everything that was given to us from 1977, when we paid all of that pile of money to do a study, on the environment and its impact in the Cayman Islands. And all of this um, argument about the, the Iron Shore and everything, planning would have had that in front of them. But as usual, normally they get a study and they put it in file 13, I call it, that's the garbage pan. And then they go back and pay somebody else to do another study. And that same person will tell them the same thing over and over again. So yes, it is doable and it must be done because we got to protect the environment for our future generations and for everything that we believe in, cultural heritage, you know, prosperity is comes at a cost, unfortunately, on the environment. But then at the same time, we don't need to approve uh, uh, skyrocket hotels on the Iron Shore. The beach is mine. I can bathe there anytime, despite what they say, I got bathe there anyway. So everybody's used to jumping off the Iron Shore. Everybody's used to fishing from the Iron Shore. So now you can't even find a place to even walk on the Iron Shore, much less the beach. So we got to really, really go back to the drawing board and revamp everything that was given to us way back when and make sure that it is regulated and done. Next question is again about the environment generally. So what are your views about attracting more investment and development in Little Cayman and Cayman Brac? 
So would you support a campaign to increase the population of the sister islands? Well, I would not support a campaign to increase the population, but I would say that I really want to attract more, more um, of the correct people. And that the people who are going to love the island the way that we love it. And that can go for the staycationers that they're doing right now. Like I heard a lot of people are, are investing in Kim and Brack's Bluff now and on the on beach. And I know there's a lot of investment going on here in Lil' Cayman, a lot of subdivisions going on. Now, what we have right now in Lil' Cayman is just what we call, um, you couldn't call them staycationers. We call them they come sometime three months out of the year. Some come for six, depending on how cold it is in their country. But, <clears throat> sorry, investment is always a part of development. And we do need a little bit more than what we have here in order to, for the young people to get jobs in order. But it can be, man, it can be controlled by the planning department. But it again, it must be by people who are not by us self-serving or having a conflict of interest. And a lot of that is going on in the sister islands that kisses go by favor, but it has to stop. So yes, Kim and Brad could do it a little bit more investment and development, but it must be controlled. So does Lil Cayman. And, um, but I really wouldn't support getting a whole pile of people in Lil Cayman. That was one of the main reasons why I moved back home. 27 years ago, because if I want that, I can jump on the plane and go to Grand Cayman and just a road rage alone makes me want to come back after two nights. One night, actually. But um, yes, we do need a little bit more in order for the children to survive in their own island country. We do need a little bit more um, investment and a little bit more development, but not that much more. So it can be controlled and it is doable. So next question deals with health insurance. So health insurance premiums continue to increase annually for many businesses and especially for persons who reach retirement age. So what improvements, if any, would you propose to make the health insurance more affordable for businesses and retirees? That's on my manifesto because it is a serious problem. After you work all your life, so... To make the rich man richer, you would say. Um, then they leave you out in the loop. Oh, they only give you back a thousand dollars a month out of your pension. You can't survive on that. And then they tell you out of that thousand dollars, then you got to pay five hundred dollars for you and your husband or you and your family to survive. And um, it needs to be addressed, and it needs to be addressed immediately with the new government because it should be at a lower premium if you're a retiree, because you're now a senior citizen. Internationally, no matter where you go, senior citizens are given special discounts on tickets, special discounts on transport, trans, you know, special discounts with everything. So, and every year the insurance company should not be going up by 10, 15%, because it is totally wrong for the people. And not only just the employee, employer, but the employees cannot afford it. And um, so then you end up working for just to pay insurance. So how, how can you balance it? You must balance it by having the government step in and take a complete overhaul of what is going on because the premiums are skyrocket high and they only reimburse you no matter which insurance it is, 100 CI dollars a year. And just as you open the door of the doctor's office, that's $250. You haven't even said hello to him yet. You haven't even met him yet. So it has to change. And I have that on my, my manifesto for the Sister Islands and for the Cayman Islands as a whole. So it has to be something that can be set in place to protect not only the senior citizen, but everybody in general. And the last question in this round of five questions is affordable housing. So the availability of affordable housing is a major issue in Grand Cayman. Is the situation in the BRAC and Little Cayman similar? And what would you recommend to address this important national issue? 
It's a big problem. It is a huge, big problem because the land costs have gone skyrocket high. Went straight through the roof and blew it off. So how can you afford a piece of land that a piece of land costs over $100,000? And I'm not talking about just beach property or insure property. I'm talking about bluff property. I'm talking about anywhere you're going to Cayman Islands, just about. So if your salary is only $2,500 a month, for example, how can you afford to pay that back, the bank, when the bank wants to pay the 200 out of that? And they're discriminating against age, and that's wrong. Affordable housing, not only through government, but should be, be allowed through the private sector too. And um, government is doing a good job so far, but it is needed across all three islands, not just Grand Cayman and Cayman Brat. Here in Lil Cayman, we do have this year about 37 registered voters, was the last count I had. That's not that great updated one on the 1st of April. So we need to address it and we need to address it be before it gets too way out of hand that you can't address it at all. So if I was win, I am chosen to represent the people of the islands. I would make sure that no more affordable housing be put on the main land of Cayman Brack. They all be put on the bluff. And here in Lil Cayman, they be put on the highest point of this island because we do have three, what they call hills, that um, we can put them that, you know, in case of a major disaster, God forbid, that um, the people will have somewhere to go, you know, that they can, can because the hurricane shelter is up on a small bluff and that is all land that's owned by government. So we need to invest into our people a lot more and bring the cost of, because they're working on commission, that's the reason why the land is so high. Well, Got to change. Again, there, we've finished 15 questions and we're going to take <laughs> another short commercial break. And then when we come back, we'll have the final five questions for this evening's forum. Please stay with us.
the Chamber of Commerce Candidates Forum for Cayman Brack West and Little Cayman. Now we're entering into the final round of questions. And for this final round, we're going to begin with the subject of new industries for Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. So what new industries would you seek to encourage to set up in Cayman Brack and Little Cayman if you were elected? Well, we all know that uh, Grand Cayman survives on a lot of offshore banking, insurance companies, and reinsurance companies. Back, I was insurance broker for 14 years, so I know a lot about that, you know. I would hold meetings with local offices and offshore companies to persuade them to relocate on the bluff Cayman Brack and or the higher points there in Lil Cayman. Bearing in mind, as I said, we do have six months out of the year hurricane season. So when I remember when Ivan hit Grand Cayman, the offshore companies and the offshore banking uh, ran away to the, where was the hit? ABC Islands and, and Nassau and Bermuda in order to operate. If they put something on the bluff, office for every one of them, they would be able to just move there. So it'd be easier for them. But focusing on portraying less traffic, low cost of living, peaceful and safe environment, or solid infrastructure that is there now, and a multiple daily flights into the Cayman Islands by our national airline, Cayman Airways. Re relocating of offshore companies on our territory must be accompanied by new immigration policies that would make sure that the Caymanians are trained and get the proper um, input for how to operate these offshore reinsurances, banking, and insurance companies. And to, to, to do this, we need to set in place where the proper zoning is would be on the bluff to locate all of these different, build, different buildings. And every one of them, all they need to do is put a cement roof. And in a hurricane, they can operate in the right and proper manner. And there's no reason why they can't be relocated. I said that from the year of our Lord, 2000, 21 years ago. And it's about time that it be set in place that you know, you invite them to relocate because of all of these natural disasters that can happen. Thank you. The next question actually weaves right into um, the financial services industry. And given that the financial services is critical to our island's economy, if elected, would you how would you respond to the FATF gray listing and the European Union's intention to blacklist us even though we have met most of their requirements? Well, we all know that the outer world um, spins around on time. We cannot be late with putting in any information whatsoever. We should be proactive with that. We should have those all in before they ask us to have them in. And we should be transparent. And we should be in a manner that would be well-pleasing to everybody because you know, and to say the Caymanian way, I soon come, don't work in the outer world. You know that, well, I know that. The whole wild world know that, you know. So we were not blacklisted before. We were blacklisted this last time because it took us three days or three and a half days, something like that, I was told, um, to present what we had to present. Yes, we have to restructure our way of thinking and don't say, I soon come, I soon get it for you. No, we need to have everything in order. Be transparent about it and they will never have to blacklist us ever again. The FATF or none of those other um, corporate offices that run the whole wide world. So in order for Cayman to keep up and to be to get back up from whatever they are, um, where they are now in the financial industry, we have to make sure that we're proactive with everything and get it in on time, in fact, before time, that they can't say, well, we're still here waiting on the Cayman Islands to present X, Y, and D from their financial section of the government or the private sector uh, as a whole. So that's the only how that we're going to be able to keep with what is expected of us and what we know that we must do. So get it all together all in time, present it before time, 
And if there's any problems that need to be changed, we can get them changed in time. Thank you. Next subject is the national lottery. And the, and the question is, the introduction of a national lottery has been discussed for many years as a way of funding education and infrastructure. What's your view on introducing a national lottery and would you introduce it if you were elected? Well, let's put it this way. It's never ever gonna leave the Cayman Island, not selling numbers. So I do think that a lot of people feel that if they lose selling the numbers on the cover, that it would be the biggest disaster. They would never be able to, to survive, you know? But I do think that, um, me personally, I do think that that will and can even be better for the Cayman Islands, not a casino. I'm not in, in I'm not really approved of any casino. I'm talking about the numbers now, which is a lottery. Have, uh, the people who are selling now wouldn't have to hide. They would be paid by government then to sell the numbers to those people who can't get there to wherever they set it up. And it would not be anybody shooting nobody or stabbing up nobody because they didn't pay or I told you to play this number for me and you didn't play it because you whatever, whatever. There's a lot of crime going on because of undercover lottery. And we ain't going to stop that numbers playing in the Cayman Islands. It's been here from the 1970s and it'll be here until God come, I believe because they call it gambling, but then even the churches gamble, if you look at it in that manner, they have a car out there, the schools go there and they put a car out there, buy a ticket for this, buy a ticket for that. So I do think that it would help with the cost of living, would bring it down. I do think it would help with our, our healthcare, our education. It would help in a lot of way. And the people who are selling it now would be paid in the right manner from government and for selling it to people who cannot make it to whichever place that you can buy it. Once as long as you set it up in a right and proper manner, it should be run. It would be run. And I would be, you know, I'd say, yeah. The next one deals with youth. Next question. What, what do you regard as the top two issues facing our youth today? And how do you intend to address these concerns if elected? I said a little bit earlier to you before we were on the show that the young people biggest concern right now is the decriminalization of the hemp plant and um, its medicinal purposes. And also for the mothers, I think they're the biggest problem with the youth right now is those that have the special needs, those that have the autistic problems and also why we don't have a trade school is the questions have been asked. Well, we need a trade school. That is definitely something that we need to do. And we should do a boarding school up on top of the bluff that the, the children in Grand Cayman would learn all three of their islands. They're boarded out there and being well taken care of at a teenage age. I also feel that um, the, the parents and the youth would like to see a middle school reinstated back because of all the, the infrastructure for bullying and everything else that goes on uh, between, I think that the middle school should go back to being year seven, eight, and nine, and the high school uh, year 10, 11, and 12. And that, that way you would um, cut out some of the bullying. But the biggest concern of the young people right now, as I said, is that decriminalization that, you know, throw them in jail for doing things that they ain't supposed to do. And um, liquor is the same way, you know? Uh, I do think that the liquor licensing should put up for children to don't drink like the, the international world to 21, not 18, because 18 is too young for you to understand how to control it. It controls you. And uh, whereas I'm in not agreement with uh, everybody walk around being weed heads, as the old folks would say, I am in agreement for scientists being made out of our young folks and them learning the pros and cons of medicinal plants because all plants are medicinal just about in every way. And the young people are concerned about that mainly. And the final question for this evening deals with the elderly. And what, what would you recommend or support additional programs to assist the elderly population in Cayman Brac 
Little Cayman and the Cayman Islands in general? And if yes, you, can you please elaborate on the programs or assistance you'd provide? Yes, I do think uh, that more programs are needed. Um, in Cayman Brack, I know, for example, those folks that are so down and out and trying to do things to themselves that they shouldn't even be thinking about doing, you know, they're not allowed to, to, to take their own medication. So they got to go every day to the faith hospital. We don't have no pharmacists like how Grand Cayman has. And Grand Cayman has a lot of old people just like we do. And a lot of people who need help, not only just physically, but mentally. So yes, there are a lot of programs could be set in place to help these kind of people, you know, that um, they don't have to worry about how am I going to get my medication again? You know, the taxes are limited on the BRAC. You have a lot of them in Grand, but they're limited on the BRAC, and there are no taxis in Lil Cayman. And the older folks here, most of them still drive. So they're up in their 80s and trucking 90 years old, and they still drive because there's not much traffic. But in Cayman Brack, too. But then there are a lot of people who never drove in their life. So how are they going to get their medication? How are they going to get their, their therapy that they need? How are they going to do all of this? So there's a lot of programs that, that can be set in place to help the older folks in every way that we possibly can. Remember that it was because of them where we are today. You know, or the old seamen them that uh, they just can't get out of bed, some of them anymore. Some of them can still get out of bed, but um, you know, they just can't take care of themselves anymore. They took care of us, we should take care of them in every manner that we possibly can. And that not only goes for the older folks, that goes for those who, that are mentally disabled. We need a place for the mental in the sister islands on the bluff too. I say on the bluff for everything because it, it protects us from all kinds of natural disasters. So yes, I agree. Well, we thank need. you. Thank you for responding to the 20 questions. We're gonna take a short commercial break. And when we return, we'll have closing remarks from our candidate, Ms. Maxine McCoy Moore. Please stay tuned. And little came in. It's now time for Maxine McCoy Moore to provide us with her closing comments for this evening. Over to you, Maxine. Thank you, Will. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Remember, ma'am, that's my initial, Maxine Avon McCoy Moore, M A M M, will be Kim and Brack and Lil Kiman, best MP. Once you all come out and put one X by my name. Please, no more than one X. Last time I got two and three and four and five Xs. Today we are launching together on a journey that has its eyes clearly settled on the future. The opportunity to serve you is definitely thrilling. I recognize my role as a member of parliament to be a very powerful tool for positive transformation amidst this historical moment that we are currently living in. Still, as I said before, I'll say again, I can't run this race alone. I will enhance the speech to say, no man is an island and no woman stands alone. I could go on and on with improvements that are needed, but I'm just taking it one step at a time. I need your input, not only just my input. My next meeting will be on the 26th of March at seven o'clock at the Western Community Park. Please come out and enjoy 
a fun full evening between seven and nine and maybe a little bit later. I invite you to share your thoughts and ideas with me to cherish our beautiful Cayman Islands and especially Cayman Brack and Lil Cayman. Nourish me with your forthcoming plans that you envision. This way I can truly state that you have elected me and before committing to this position of being your true representative in the Cayman Islands House of Parliament, your visions will and can be added to my list of must do's. Please don't forget to introduce me to your neighbors and your friends. Those 98 Cayman Brackers who voted for me in 2017, invite four or five more people to, and that way I will get in to help you, not only for today, but for future generations to come. One day we will pass on the baton to the next generation, and it is our duty to run harder and go further than the person who handed the baton to us. I wish to leave this world with a couple of islands that are better than they were when I was a little girl <coughs> growing up between Kim and Brack and Lil Cayman. Let's work together to accomplish this mission. Thank you so much. Let's work together to accomplish this mission. <coughs> I will keep praying to our God, our creator, that you all will understand that mom will be Kim and Brack and Lil Cayman, best MP. Let us all stay safe, safe and healthy as the Cayman Islands are right now. Let us all work and live and keep our islands COVID-free as we aim to be and healthy as we should and crime-free as we always used to be. God bless each and every one of us. Thank you. Well, thank you. And on behalf of the Chamber Council and staff, I'd like to thank the Cayman Brack West and the Little Cayman candidate, Mrs. Maxine McCoy moore for participating in this evening's forum. I trust that the forum will help to inform voters when you go to the polls on the 14th of April. I'd also like to thank Fosters for their major sponsorship of the Chamber's candidates' forums, as well as Affinity Recruitment, Bodens Legal and Corporate, and DART. If you're interested in viewing more of the Growth Matters video series they've been playing during the commercial breaks, they can be accessed at growthmatters.ky. So please join us on Monday evening as we welcome Captain Eugene Ebanks, and Catherine Ebanks Wilkes from the constituency of West Bay Central. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope you will join us tomorrow uh, and Monday evening at the same time. Good night, and have a good weekend.